Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the best way to configuration management yourself ever. We wrote a gem. It's called Chamber. It's pretty cool. It lives here and here. Now, first up, uh, I want to talk about a little bit of terminology we're going to use today in the screencast. In Chamber, we don't restrict you to grouping your config settings only by environment. We also allow you to group by any arbitrary data. Now, don't worry, we'll look at that later, but just know that as far as we're concerned for this talk, an environment, which you may have heard of in other configuration management libraries, is the equivalent of a namespace. So if I say either one of those, you know what I'm talking about. Next, I want to point out that there are a lot of other gems out there that do things similarly to what Chamber does. And we took the best ideas from each of these, improved on them, and added our own. This is an iterative work. Writing Chamber would have been much more difficult without these gems paving the way. Now, that said, we found that each of them were lacking in at least one area, which was causing us pain, and I'm going to go through each of them now. But before we get into talking about Chamber itself, I want to discuss the philosophy that most of the configuration and settings libraries adhere to. It's called 12-factor. If you go to 12factor.net, you'll find a list of 12 principles which define how you should build clean, portable, and scalable applications from the start so that you're less likely to end up with a big ball of mud. The 12 factor principles were written by a guy by the name of Adam Wiggins. And I suggest anyone who is not familiar with it, go check it out. But specifically related to configuration management, we're going to look at a couple quotes from the config section. There are a couple of points that this section makes. I'm going to go through them quickly, and then we're going to come back to them at the end. An app's config is everything that is likely to vary between deploys. Apps sometimes store config as constants in the code. This is a violation of 12-factor, which requires strict separation of config from code. A litmus test for whether an app has all config correctly factored out of the code is whether the code base could be made open source at any moment without compromising any credentials. Specifically, these next points relate to why not to use config files. It's easy to mistakenly check in a config file into the repo. There's a tendency for config files to be scattered about in different places and different formats, making it hard to see and manage all the config in one place. Lastly, config file formats tend to be language or framework specific. And now on why not to group config files by environment. This method doesn't scale cleanly. As more deploys of the app are created, new environment names are necessary, such as staging or QA. As the project grows further, developers may add their own special environments, like Joe's staging, resulting in a combinatorial explosion of config, which makes managing deploys of the app very brittle. Now, this point is one in which I partially disagree on. I say partially because it's only true insofar as it is a problem of storing all your config settings in the environment in the first place. We'll see how Chamber solves this a little bit later. Now, let's look at a couple of the problems we ran into with storing config settings in the environment, and problems in general with some of the other library-based solutions that are out there. Problem number one, complex values. Environment variables can only be strings, period. So if your configuration is based completely on environment variables, then even something as simple as a flag to determine whether or not a feature is enabled in staging, but not enabled in production, becomes a weird dance, which is not very elegant. Now, we could check to see if my new feature enabled is truthy, and that works okay for if it's true, but what about if it's false? Because when we're working with environment variables, the only falsy value is when the setting is not set. So you can run into what I'm calling the nil false unknown conundrum. When using environment variables, if you simply do not set a variable, it could mean one of three things. Either you wanted the value to be empty, or you expected it to be interpreted as false, or you forgot to set it entirely. Now, I don't want that kind of ambiguity in my config settings if I can help it. So what's the solution? In Chamber, any values which you do not explicitly want to be stored as environment variables, which will be most of them, can be any scalar value that YAML and Psyche supports. Now, this includes strings, booleans, arrays, hashes, dates, null, numbers, regexes, and symbols. Now, granted, those last two 
are Ruby specific, which breaks the rule of 12 factor that says all config file formats should be language agnostic. So if you use them, you have to know the trade-offs. But in short, this means that you'll never again have to do something like this contrived example. And instead, you can do something like this, or even the hash-based syntax if you like that better. Problem number two, organization. As I alluded to above, when you're working with even a small-sized application, being able to organize your config settings is a huge benefit. Even in a small startup application, the number of config options can get very large very fast. Here's an example of what our almost brand new startup's config settings would look like if we stored it all as environment variables, and we've only just begun. In my opinion, adding more stuff to this list may be scalable, but manageable is a completely different thing. Solution number two. Chamber lets you organize your configuration in three ways. First, you can have your settings organized in one file, like so. This is great to start out with, but you quickly find that the main reason you need configuration options is to have different values between your namespaces. Typically, this means loading settings based on the environment your app is running in. The chamber solution should look pretty familiar. This is similar to what you would see in something like Figaro. But there are certain times when you'd like to split out certain environments from others. For example, we have our production settings, and for some reason we want to store those separately. In chamber, it's as easy as doing something like this. Creating a file with the namespace on the end of the common root, here it's settings, and Chamber will load that file only in the case the value of one of your namespaces is production. More importantly, if you want to git ignore all your production settings files, now you can. Lastly, to really clean things up, you can move all of the specific types of configuration into a settings directory. In this case, our settings.yaml was getting a little crowded, so we moved all of the SMTP config settings into their own SMTP YAML files. Problem number three, sharing config info between namespaces. If you're doing environment variable based configuration only, sharing common config information between environments can be a pain. Here's the problem. When creating a new environment, you have to duplicate all settings from every environment. This is the combinatorial explosion that the 12-factor site was talking about in the earlier slide. And why is this the case? Well, when using environment variables to store configuration options, you have some options which are different between environments, but you have some options that are the same. You're probably wondering, if some of the options are the same, why aren't you just hard coding them? Why are they in your configuration options at all? There are three reasons for this. The first is that just because it doesn't change between environments doesn't mean that I don't want to keep it secret. The eBay affiliate account ID is the same one used in production as it is in sandbox mode, but I still don't want to commit it to the repo. Secondly, just because it doesn't change between environments doesn't mean I'm not using it in more than one place. And if I'm duplicating the value in specific places, I want to dry that stuff up so that if and when I need to change it, I only have to do it in one spot. The last reason is that even if I'm only using it in one spot in the code, I want to have only one place I have to look for settings for a given thing. If I'm configuring the way I work with eBay, I don't want to have to look in, for example, an initializer and in a config file. I want to have one place, one source. So maybe we do something like this. And now you're thinking to yourself, aren't you duplicating site ID? Isn't that going to turn into a combinatorial explosion? And yeah, you're absolutely right. Fortunately, because Chamber uses YAML, the YAML format gives us a tool for that in the form of links and anchors. So in Chamber, the previous example would look something like this. Notice also that we're now able to set a default to limit API calls, but only change it in production. Looking at it all together in this file is extremely easy to see. If you were to look at it in a list of environment variables, it wouldn't be nearly so. Problem number four, coordinating between team members and environments. If anyone's been on a team of more than one person and has tried to keep up with configuration changes, you know that it can be a nightmare. When you have files such as .env.production and .env.staging, and you're trying to keep them in sync between your developers, what do you have to do? 
Sometimes people use something like Dropbox, set up a share between all of their devs, they simulate the configs from the share into the project directory, and changes are updated between developers that way. Unfortunately, Dropbox's audit history and revision browsing leaves a lot to be desired. It's not designed with developers in mind. Others will set up a completely separate Git repo, and that's a much better solution, but files still need to be simlinked. And for those of you who think that storing sensitive information in Git is icky no matter what, even this won't work for you. If only there was some way that we could keep our sensitive information secure and allow us to check it in with our code. And public-private key pairs come to the rescue. I know what you're thinking. Encrypting. Fine. But that's a one-time deal. If we have to decrypt the data every single time we need to get access to it, what a pain. But never fear. Chamber is going to come to your rescue. Chamber allows you to store encrypted settings in your settings files, and it will automatically decrypt them whenever they're needed. Easy. Step zero, run Chamber in it. It'll generate a unique public-private key pair for your project. This only has to be done one time. Step one, we change all of our secure settings to have the prefix underscore secure underscore. Step two, run Chamber secure. Step three, your YAML config now looks like this, but when you want to access any secure setting, Chamber will use a custom private key assigned to your project that was generated when you ran Chamber init to decrypt the values automatically. So now the only thing you have to sync between your team members is the private key. And since this will never change for the life of your product, it's a one-time thing. That's true, but all you have to do is run chamber Heroku push, and it will set environment variables on Heroku for all of the secure settings in your YAML files. Okay, if that's the way that you feel, you can add a dash dash skip secure only flag to the Heroku push command, and it'll upload all of your environment variables onto your Heroku app. Okay, easy. All you have to do is upload your private chamber.pem file as part of your deployment process, and Chamber will work just fine. Now, if you want to use Chamber settings on Travis CI, running the Chamber Travis Secure command will encrypt all of your secure settings into your Travis.yaml file using your Travis CI public key, such that when you deploy to Travis, Chamber will pick them up just as it does on Heroku. Problem number five, accidentally committing secure configs into the repo. But even as awesome as all of this is so far, it doesn't do you any good if you accidentally commit a secure setting to the repo before running Chamber Secure. But because Chamber gives you conventions to follow, we can easily implement a git pre-commit hook, which if you've changed any of your settings files and any of the line changes include a secure setting that has not been secured, the commit will abort. This hasn't been completed just yet, but should be done in the next week or two. Problem number six, comparing environments. One of the final problems we're going to look at is being able to compare environments to make sure that the same settings are set on each one. If we add a setting to .env to test out locally, it's far too easy to forget to add it to the other three. For example, test staging and production. Then when you deploy, you wonder why stuff is breaking. Solution number six, if you run chamber compare with the first and second options, and you give it the namespaces that you want to compare, it will run a git diff against the output and show you the differences. By default, it only compares the keys. But if you'd like to have it compare the values as well, you can give it the dash dash no keys only flag and that'll do the job. Okay, okay, this is another similar problem. How can you compare what Heroku has set versus what you have locally? This may take two forms. Either you want to verify your local settings, say production, against a Heroku instance, which is currently running your production app, or you want to compare your local development settings with what is currently running on Heroku. This command will run a git diff against the output and show you the differences. Again, by default, it only compares the keys, but if you'd like to have it compare the values, you can add the dash dash no keys only flag, and that will do the job. Now for the second scenario, you could run a command like this, which is comparing your local development settings against your production Heroku instance. Problem number seven, inconsistent local settings. One thing that is overlooked by most systems 
is that there are development configuration settings, and then there are local configuration settings. I don't want to have to copy some shared config file and then worry about having to keep that in sync with any changes that are made to it because I have to copy it locally. So let's look at an example. You're going to have a settings.example.yaml file, and you're going to copy it and create a file called settings.yaml. Now, at this point, everything is hunky dory, but you need to change a value locally. That's completely reasonable. Now, here comes the rub. One of your other developers adds a new setting which is required to use their new merged in feature of the app. So they add it to the example settings file so that everyone can see it. Completely reasonable. But the problem is that now on your next poll, you have to notice that the settings.example.yaml file changed and then update your local copy. Not only that, but you basically have to manually merge the two copies since you don't want to override your local changes either. Wouldn't it be better if you could just say, use all the shared development settings, but then if we have local settings, override those with whatever's in the development settings. Coming in the next version of Chamber, you can do exactly this. You'll be able to use namespaces for your settings files, which will be loaded after all of the other settings are loaded. By default, it'll be the name of your system and or local. So if I'm on a system whose host name is set to tumbleweed, then it will look for settings files in this order. Now, settings-development.yaml, which is checked in, can be updated freely, and the new settings will apply locally automatically. By default, Chamber init will git ignore all settings files that end in dash local.yaml, but theoretically, all of the host name settings could be checked in since they won't apply to anyone else's system. I'm not saying that this is a good idea, I'm just saying that it's possible, and if it's a need for your team, you could do it. So, in conclusion, let's revisit some of the 12 factor principles for good configuration management. 12 factor requires strict separation of config from code. Yep, you can easily store your config in a separate repo from your code, although I never do, it's possible. A litmus test is whether you could open source your app at any moment without compromising credentials. Yep, all secure settings are encrypted so that it can be open sourced at any time without compromising any credentials. It should not be easy to mistakenly check in a config file. Absolutely, a git commit hook will prevent this. There's a tendency for config files to be scattered in different places and different formats. Yep, although it's configurable, Chamber has specific conventions for where settings files should go. Config file formats tend to be language or framework specific. YAML is language agnostic. Grouping by environment does not scale. YAML's anchoring mitigates this nicely and provides a solution that is in fact superior to storing everything in environment variables. And that's it. Again, if you want to take a look at the code, you can find it here, or you can look at any of my personal repos on GitHub here. If anyone has any questions or suggestions for Chamber, you can feel free to create an issue on the repo or ping me on Twitter. Thanks for watching.